A very good afternoon to everybody. This is M. Krishna Prasad welcoming you on behalf of Rata Bangalore. Today we have one more interesting session of the webinar. And before I proceed, let me explain to you what does Rata do. Rata is an abbreviation for Refrigeration and Air Conditioner Traders Association Limited. In short, it is called as RATA. Rata. This association was started in the year 1949 in Mumbai and today it has 13 chapters spread across India and there are 1100 members. Rata is an association of MSMEs, people in the line of refrigeration, air conditioning, traders, contractors and manufacturers of refrigeration, air conditioning products. The basic purpose of RATA is to create a platform for all the people, for all the, um, for all the members in re refrigeration and air conditioning trade and manufacturing. It creates frequent interaction among all its members, thereby a trader meets a manufacturer, a manufacturer meets a service provider across India. So thereby it helps the total trade in developing on the business. Apart from this, RATA also conducts regular webinars and physical seminars for knowledge sharing among its members. The various affiliated associations of RATA, affiliations of RATA like Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, etc., they're all individually affiliated to the local level trade association bodies like how in Bangalore we are uh, we are associated with FKCCI which is a trade union of trade bodies of Karnataka so they help us in interacting and liaisoning with the government and thereby RATA helps the traders and its members in resolving any doubts or problems that we come across with the government of India or the state governments. As I told you, the purpose of RATA is unite trade members so they can collaborate with each other, develop knowledge bank, engage with central and state government and get benefits for the trade. RATA is also affiliated to ASOCHEM. FKCCI, Chamber in Maharashtra and Gujarat and various other chapters. The RATA head office is ably managed by its national president, Mr. Ajit Panikkar, who runs his own company by name Pure Blue Technologies Private Limited. We, the members of RATA Bangalore, are headed by its president, C. Subramanyam, who runs a company by name Triple S consultants for the last 18 years. Rata Bangalore is 78 members strong and we are two years old in this line. We have been conducting regular webinars every month. We have been conducting various interactive meet among the members and thereby we have been imparting knowledge and helping our members to do better business and to give them confidence. As I told you, every month we keep conducting two or three webinars. Today we have a very interesting webinar. And this webinar is being conducted by a knowledgeable person who has done his diploma in M MRAC. He has 30 years experience in sales, service, design and project execution in HVAC. He is a member of RATA F and FKCCI. He is a past president of ISHRE and ASHRE Bangalore chapter. He is a national chair of student activities of ISHRE headquarters. He has delivered lectures for ISHRE, ASHRE, Bangalore chapters and various other organizations. Of late, he has been actively involved in the activities of RATA and he has been delivering 
many knowledge sharing webinars in the last two years. Presently, he is the CEO of Messrs. Climatics, the authorized dealer of Carrier and Toshiba products. And today, he is going to talk on the topic types of air conditioning applications. And we will be hearing more from the speaker. And this speech or this talk, what is going to be given, is going to be a delivery of a, of a talk which is followed by a questionnaire. All the members who are here, I request you to keep your questions ready. So once the speaker has delivered his talk, you can put across your questions, which will be forwarded to the speaker who will clarify all your doubts. Now, let me not take more time. I, I know you're all are waiting to hear from the speaker. Members, please join me in welcoming the speaker of the day, Mr. Madhukar. Please, let's give a big round of applause. Mr. Madhukar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prasad, for that uh, introduction. Uh, so it's indeed a pleasure for me to be on Rata platform to make the presentation. So without uh, sharing much time, so uh, I would like to start sharing my screen and proceed with the presentation. Just give me a minute. I'll start sharing my screen. Just give me a minute, sir. Yeah, some technical hitch. Can you see my screen now? Uh, not yet. Can you see? Yeah. No, Hope I'm no, audible. No. Yes, yes, you're audible. Okay. Okay. So good evening to all. Uh, without sharing, uh, wasting much time, I will start my presentation. Uh, so types of air conditioning applications. In today's topic, we'll be discussing about air conditioning for hotels, health clubs, and resorts, data center, and precision air conditioning then shopping malls, auditoriums, and convention centers. The broader prospect is we are not going to get into the depth of design aspects. We are just going to talk brief, discuss briefly about what are the types of air conditioning systems which we are going to have in these kind of applications. So different applications have got different uh, varieties of air conditioning, different temperature conditions to be maintained, different challenges to be maintained. So in this first series, probably we'll be talking about these uh, three mentioned here and moving on maybe we will talk about other uh, applications also so air conditioning what is air conditioning it's a process where temperature humidity movement of air cleanliness odor are all simultaneously controlled in an enclosed uh, space so the main purpose of uh, air conditioning is if we are not able to maintain any one of this then it is not air conditioning. A lot of people just say when I talk about air conditioning, they simply talk about temperature and humidity. But let us please understand, movement of air is most important part when we talk about comfort air conditioning and the quantity of air defines this movement of air. So at the same time, uh, this air quantity also plays a major role when we talk about air conditioning. So all these five needs to be simultaneously controlled in an enclosed space when we talk about air conditioning. Then temperature and humidity. So what is temperature? It is the degree or intensity of heat present in a substance or object. Generally, it is measured in Fahrenheit or Celsius. I've just given a formula here which can be used for conversion. Like for example, degree Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 into degree centigrade plus 32 and degree centigrade is equal to degree Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 
1.8. Then what is humidity? Humidity is the amount of moisture content in air. So then what is ton of refrigeration? See, generally we all talk about how many, uh, what capacity AC you need. We talk about 3 tons, 1.5 tons, 2 tons, 4 tons, 5 tons. So what does this mean? It is nothing but it is called the ton of refrigeration. It is the rate of removal of heat. It is the rate at which heat can be removed from an enclosed space. So what does it mean when we say 1 ton? That means 1 ton is equal to 12,000 BTU per hour. That means if you have an air conditioner of 1 ton uh, capacity, you can remove 12,000 BTU of heat in 1 hour. That is what it means when we say 1 TR. Similar rate is 3,000 kilocalories per hour or 3.5 kilowatts or 1.25 HP. Generally, this kilowatts and HP is used in VRF or an inverter technology, which is now fast catching up. Then, so what is heat? We just told that heat, uh, if we have to cool a place, we have to remove heat. So then what is heat? Heat is a form of energy. Heat cannot be destroyed, but it can be transferred from one substance to another or from one place to another place. Generally, it moves from a warmer region to a colder region or warmer substance to a colder substance. So the unit of heat is British thermal unit. So what, does, what do we, what is 1 BTU? 1 BTU is the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of 1 pound of water by 1 degree Fahrenheit. Conversely, if you have to cool something, then we have to remove uh, 1 Fahrenheit of uh, heat from that 1 pound of substance to reduce the temperature by 1 degree Fahrenheit. So this is known as 1 BTU. Then, now since we are talking about application for comfort application, we need to know what is it that causes the air quality to be bad. So what is it that the air quality which we talk about because we are talking about comfort air conditioning. Let's discuss. There are two types of pollutants that we come across. One is called the outdoor pollutant and the second one is the indoor pollutant. Let's just look at what are the outdoor pollutants. Number one, the most important is the vehicular pollution that comes from outside. The, so, and the, the causes for vehicular uh, pollution is adulterated fuel or even traffic congestion. Then, we do have some kind of industrial emissions, generally some uh, chemical uh, fumes uh, let out by the industries or maybe some acids are used for cleaning purpose. Those smells and all come out. Those are known as industrial emissions. Then construction and demolition. Any construction activity or demolition activi activity happening around you also would bring in a lot of dust which could cause pollution. Then power generation, if it is coal based, let us say for example, if you are in an area where a lot of power generation happens, then there could be this coal based uh, pollution also available there. Then domestic and outdoor cooking, even inside the house, when we are cooking, there could be a lot of pollutants that could be uh, affecting us. Then burning of garbage, which is very, very common of late. Of course, now that we have uh, the option of collecting wet garbage and dry garbage and taking it outside the city limits, uh, in, uh, it is very, but still, if you look at uh, burning of garbage, one example, what I would like to give is uh, during summer, if there are some grass areas and marsh areas which are very dry, it is just collected in one place and then it, you put fire on place, which brings out a thick uh, smoke and that smoke could be really dangerous for you. Then disappearance of green areas and lack of trees. So in the name of uh, development of metros, we are uh, giving way for a lot of trees. But however, I don't say that it is wrong for cutting the trees. But if we are going to cut one tree, I think we need to make sure that somewhere else we plant another 10 trees so that we compensate for the green space which we are taking away. Then during the agricultural harvest, I know a lot of uh, friends of mine who have this uh, allergy to pollens because uh, during this harvest season, the pollens emit some kind of uh, fumes that actually some people do not uh, do not tolerate. So they, that results in asthma or it results in severe cough and cold. Then let's look at some of the causes for indoor air pollution. So number one is if whatever pollution we spoke about outdoors, if that air is untreated, then that causes a lot of indoor air pollution, then combustion of biomass fuels, burning of coal, it could be inside your kitchen or it could be inside your hotel or it could be some barbecue where you have these kind of uh, burning of coal, then volatile organic compounds. Now, this is something which no, none of us give importance to. Like, for example, the furnishings inside our house, inside our office, all have 
some kind of volatile organic compounds which is used for sticking then paints and solvents which create a lot of chemical fumes then cleaning agents a lot of chemical agents which we use uh, specifically in industries or specific application which we will try to look at as we move forward in this presentation there are a lot of cleaning agents which we come across for various application which could also cause a lot of chemical fumes then biological pollutants like dust mittens dust mites and pollens which i spoke about now infectious agents produced in mattress carpets we all feel that uh, if we have a mattress and carpet it is very very comfortable but without knowing the repercussions if it is not maintained well it could be one of the major constituents for pollution and it could result in very bad indoor air quality then the last but not the least improper ventilation and filtration which could, which could be the reason for a bad design of an air conditioning system so it is very very important for us to understand how important is ventilation and filtration of air when it comes to air conditioning process or application then the other causes common causes for air pollution is ammonia which is used in cleaning products it could irritate your eyes and it could harm your mucous membranes then bacteria like ligonella molds and fungi which is caused uh, because of your uh, if there are too many too uh, humidic humidifying areas like too humid areas there you may have some kind of algae and fungi formation where water is stagnant you could have this kind of algae and fungi formation which could actually harm uh, your lungs then carbon dioxide which uh, so, uh, the sources is respiration and combustion you feel stuffiness you feel drowsy then carpet surfaces emitting uh, the dust particles emitting out of carpet surfaces or it could be because of smoking also inside a space then formaldehyde which is used in foam insulation fabrics furniture fire retardants most of the adhesives carpet and also your cigarette smoke then carbon monoxide because of your leaking combustion device it could be in your boilers cookers which are used in uh, big capacity in hotels then outdoors is cooking perfume all of us think that perfume is a uh, we we use perfume but at times perfumes can also choke your breath if uh, it could harm somebody who are people who are allergic then of course smoking is a common reason where everybody now that public is, public has banned uh, it is banned they were smoking in public areas then humans and animals are infected by virus infectious diseases etc like sars humans animals and now most important we have all gone through this bad three phase of covid uh, three phases of covid and now we are daring to challenge the fourth phase of covid or the fourth wave of covid then volatile organic compounds like what i had mentioned in the previous slide which is used in solvents aerosol sprays cosmetics dry cleaning your pesticides etc then so how do molecular pollutants affect us if it is a smell then it affects in because of domestic rubbish cooking smells aviation fuel waste water treatment it could result in bad smell or odor then poison and toxin can be war gases hydrogen cyanide then dioxins radioactive elements radioactive gases etc then irritates irritants which could affect your health like for example your eyes your nose etc can be because of nitrogen oxide ozone uh, then ammonia then maybe lot of people are allergic to chopping off onions also then corrosion because of acetic gases in de in the typical data centers then gases in petrochemical refineries reactive gases in museums acidic gases in semiconductor uh, fabrications so these are some of the mo uh, molecular pollutants and how it can affect us now let's move on to the first category of uh, air conditioning application what we are going to discuss it's going to be on hotels health clubs and resorts now how different is it from a common air conditioning system now hotel air conditioning requires lot of ventilation lot of air changes the reasons why i say you require lot of ventilation and air changes you will know as we move on so what is room comfort so preventing the room conditions to become either too hot during summer or too cold during winter or failure to supply fresh air into the rooms can result in bad room uh, comfort or it could result in bad indoor air quality now most of us the minute we get into any hotel we might have experienced it we just get some kind of stale smell within the room 
the minute we open the window or the fresh air where the doors of balcony if you have a balcony in the rooms or in the hotel etc the air you feel much much better otherwise you really feel stuffy inside that room it is because of these kind of pollutants that are there and probably the door was kept closed for a long time and there's a lot of pollutants which has emitted out of these carpets the bed sheets the bed spreads that are used and a lot of other reasons which could be because of bad air movement or bad ventilation so it is very very important to have ventilation and air conditioning together when it comes to hotels health clubs and resorts like what are the areas of concern for us what are the areas where the air conditioning applications are there generally the reception and the living area the ballroom or banquet halls restaurants bars discotheques rooms there are two kinds of rooms one is one would be with smoking room the other one would be with non smoking room indoor games kitchen laundries indoor pools corridors etc now let me just explain in brief in each of these for example reception area will be a huge open space area where you need to maintain if it is very comfortable to maintain a temperature of 25 plus or minus 1 degree centigrade as against in some of the rooms where people would like to have 22 degrees or 23 degrees this again maintaining this temperature of 22 degrees or 23 degrees is a myth because uh, generally we feel that uh, the colder the temperature is the comfortable we are it is actually not true it is the other way around our body does not sweat at the temperature of 25 degree centigrade and we are comfortable as long as our body do not sweat so this is generally a bad uh, this thing that we follow systems like where we keep temperature at 19 degrees or 20 degrees inside a room and then we have a pullover or a blanket to cover ourselves to make ourselves comfortable which is actually not not the right way so in reception and living areas or in the common areas you can actually have about 25 plus or minus 1 degree centigrade then ballroom and banquets again depends on we will talk more about it when we discuss about auditoriums and convention centers because your banquets and ballrooms are very similar to your convention centers and uh, auditoriums so we will discuss more about it now restaurants bars and discotheque requires a different level of air changes so we need to have more fresh air coming in to remove all the stale smell in restaurant or similarly bars you have lot of liquor smell within where you need to remove the liquor smell or if it's a smoking bar so you may have to remove the, all the smoking smell the smoking stuffiness what you feel inside and discotheque of course you need more quantity of air because people would be dancing there and you will be sweating a lot so that requires a different quantity of air or a different air change that would be required then rooms when it comes to hotel rooms your accommodation rooms if it is a smoking room you need to make sure that you have a good exhaust system and a good fresh air system we call that as ventilation which is very very important then indoor games again lot of sweat smell would be there uh, so it is important for us to remove that sweat smell that means we need to have desired level of air changes to purify that air then kitchen again to remove bad smell maybe hot air etc whatever that comes out of kitchen then laundries also some chemicals are used to clean your cloth so the smells coming out of these chemicals needs to be removed then indoor pools again swimming pools which are indoors again needs to have lot of good ventilation then corridors where the passage areas or the aisle areas which you walk across to your rooms or from one zone to another zone this also needs to have good ventilation so all this i am talking about ventilation and i am also talking about air changes so now what is this air change and air change is how many times the air enters and exits a room from hvac system in one hour so this is a common terminology you google what is an air change this is what you get that the air change is how many times the air enters and exits a room from hvac system in one hour so how many times a room would fill up the air from the supply registers in 60 minutes that means in one hour what is the number of times this fresh air coming in and inside air going out that we call as number of air changes for example air changes per hour is the rate is a measure of air volume added or to be removed from a space normally an enclosed space divided by the volume of space that means we find out what is the number of air that needs to be removed and at what particular volume in what particular space volume of space in how much time 
so that is known as air change per hour and we call that as air changes generally any hvac engineer who designs a good uh, a good design system will be aware of the air changes for specific applications on what is there and this air change per hour for specific applications is also de defined for some applications like hotels auditoriums etc either in an ashray uh, guide or an ashray uh, ventilation handbooks or you can also have something known as nbc national building code where some of the air changes are mentioned so we follow ashray 62.1 or ashray handbook on good indoor air quality or we also follow the local codes like nbc or who standards so these are the codes where we can we can look into for reference of what is the air change for specific application what we are going to have then let's now move on to the data center so what is the difference between a precision air conditioning system versus comfort air conditioning system see all comfort air conditioning is used for human comfort whereas precision air conditioning for data centers is used more for equipment and it is not used for human beings so comfort air conditioners generally remove both sensible heat and latent heat whereas precision air conditioners are designed to remove very high sensible heat that means heat which can only be measured but which cannot be seen is known as sensible heat so that heat is generally emitted by the it racks servers ups and equipment with specific demand for better air distribution or in other words what is in terms of application what is the difference between a precision air conditioning system and comfort air conditioning in a comfort air conditioning system you have very types of uh, indoor units like you can have a cassette you can have a ceiling mount unit you can have a ductable unit a fan coil unit a wall mount unit a floor standing unit you can have an air cooling unit you can have a package air conditioner you can have a chiller then all this is con uh, connected to a condensing unit and you will also have a cooling tower if you are connecting to a uh, cooling uh, water cooled chiller now when it comes to precision air conditioning precision air conditioning will also typically look like a package air conditioning system if you look at here the best way of air distribution in a precision air conditioning center specifically a data center is we call that as under floor air distribution that means the cold air will generally be pumped out from the bottom and the it tends this cold air tends to push out all the hot air to the top and the return air is taken at the top of the building so this is a typical design arrangement for a typical used data center and what is it that is different is in a data in a comfort air conditioning we generally have 40 to 50% of dehumidification whereas in a data center precision air conditioning or a data center we generally maintain at a maximum of 15% of dehumidification that means the moisture content in a data center should be very 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 less because otherwise it can go and spoil your racks it can go and spoil your uh, uh, it equipment or your ups etc then what a comfort ac is generally uh, maybe it could work for 10 hours 12 hours in a day or very rarely even if it's a, let us say for an office application it could be for 24 bar 7 whereas in a precision air conditioning system it is always 24 bar 7 into 365 days so that is why you need a robust kind of air conditioning system when you are using it for a data center and that is why we generally advise to go for a precision air conditioning system or people use precision air conditioning system for these kind of data centers because there's a difference in the time of uh, difference in operation time of the air conditioning system then insufficient air quantity of a comfort ac unit per tr will result in hot spots in the room let us say for example you have a data center here if you can see all these red areas here these are known as hot spots so this is your supply air it is coming in since the velocity of this is very low or the air quantity is less so the air is going back through the return air here now in a typical data center application let us look at how the air distribution is in a typical application uh, of data center here you see more quantity of air covering the entire space going through your rack here and taking the hot air out into your return air system so this is where it is uh, very very different from a comfort air conditioning air distribution system to an air distribution which is there in data center 
So these are some of the common methods which are generally used in data centers. Then you generally take return air at the top and supply air at the bottom. What it does is by doing this process, you are actually pushing the hot air out to the top from through your racks of servers, etc. And that hot air is captured. And you should also make sure that the air quality should be very, very good because otherwise it can go sit on the electronic components that is used in the racks and it could damage your servers. So you generally you need to use a EU4 level filter for a precision air conditioning system. Then let's now move on to the next system what we are going to talk about. We are going to talk about malls. Uh, this is again very, very common to us. Most of us visit malls quite frequently. There are some malls which we feel comfortable. There are some malls which we don't feel comfortable. Again, the reasons for not being comfortable are many, many reasons. And let's try to understand some of the reasons today. The areas to be considered for air conditioning are lobbies are again different uh, temperature zones. Cinema halls are again different temperature zones. Then restaurants, bars are again different. You have specifically food courts where you need a lot of ventilation, lot of fresh air. Then showrooms, different showrooms have different temperature requirement, different heat that is given. Then supermarkets, you can uh, let us say, for example, in our own Bangalore, if you take a uh, forum mall, you have a supermarket inside, you have a showroom inside, you have a food court inside, you have a restaurant inside. Then, of course, you don't have bar here. But earlier, there was a bar on the uh, fourth floor. Now it is not there. So all these are available in supermarkets. Then you also have offices in some of the supermarkets. Uh, some of the malls have offices on the above floor and uh, lower floors. You have these uh, areas which other areas. Then health clubs and spas are also there in malls. Then most important in malls is you have three levels, four levels, five levels of parking areas where you need to have a different type of ventilation system wherein you try to bring in a lot of air changes because you can't afford to have an air conditioning system there and vehicles emit a lot of carbon monoxide. In fact, you can faint if you have a bad ventilation system in these parking areas. I mean, I may sound very strange, but it is a fact. Some people immediately they get into a parking area where it is not properly ventilated. They, feel, they get giddiness and they faint. Then, so what is it that we need to consider different areas to have different temperature, temperature, humidity, fresh air change, changes depending upon the user's requirement. Then individual operation of AC, some malls may open at 11, some, some else, uh, someone else like health clubs may open at early in the morning. If you have a gym that could operate early in the morning or run throughout the day till late night also. So it depends on individual operation of AC and also individual metering. Every shop that you see in a mall will have a metering uh, quantity and he pays power bills for what electricity he consumes. And AC is one of the major constraints for these power bills. So additional heat gains from ovens, grills, refrigeration systems in food courts. You, could, you will see a lot of ice cream parlors. You will see a lot of grills and ovens emitting a lot of heat. We need to remove that heat. And like I said, uh, air conditioning is nothing but removing heat. So if we have to cool a place, we need to remove heat from that space. And if you look at a typical restaurant or an open space restaurant where you, the food court typical in a mall where you have a lot of these grills, refrigeration systems and ovens which will emit a lot of heat. And also you need to have adequate fresh air because whatever smell that comes out of the food needs to be taken out and fresh air needs to be brought in. Otherwise, over a period of time, you will start feeling uncomfortable in a restaurant. Then additional heat gains of refrigeration systems in supermarkets. If you go in supermarket and again, you have deep freezers where they store materials. You have display cabinets where they store vegetables like mushrooms, baby corns, etc. We call that as uh, display cabinets. So those display cabinets also have refrigeration system which emit a lot of heat. So that also needs to be considered when you consider for heat load in a mall. Then multiplexes to have separate systems because of human occupancy. You need to have very perfect level of indoor air quality or a very high quality of uh, indoor air quality, a good indoor air quality while designing your multiplex. Otherwise, you will start feeling uncomfortable inside. Then, so what is it that the uh, from the builder's perspective, what is it that a person looks into in a mall is the most energy efficient systems. That means he should get 
uh, return on investment that means he has to pay less money and try to recover as fast as possible because if you are going to give a system which is going to consume a lot of energy then it is not going to be a viable option you may not get any client if you if the energy bills if they feel that the client feels that the energy bills are very very high he may not stay there for long he may vacate and go back so it is very very important for you to so have a good design and energy efficient design system in malls also the life cycle cost 15 years 20 years the more the better then system flexibility what are the types of indoors you are going to have what are the types of flexibility in terms of system in terms of application wise like i told there are different areas or different zones which require different application so how uh, user friendly is your flexibility in system is what is very very important when you design the system for malls then plant room space availability you should have adequate space let us say for example 1000 tons 2000 tons uh, air conditioning system for a mall you need to have adequate space you need to have enough space for servicing most important you need to have water access for service you need to have air access high pressure air for cleaning your filters etc in your air handling unit so all these maintenance activities to carry out the maintenance activities you need to have lot of place and you need to have lot of uh, system support i would call them as system support to clean your filters etc then let's move on to the auditoriums and convention center similar to what you have in theaters so auditorium and convention center is separated by lobbies that means you come out from outside some in some places lobbies are air conditioned in some places the lobbies are not air conditioned if the lobbies are not air conditioned we have to make sure that we do have air curtains at the doors or the doors should have a door closer i would suggest preferably to have a separate air curtain at every entrance so that whenever somebody comes in with a limit switch we call that as a limit switch when you open the door the air curtain comes on when you close the door the curtain closes so the seating area is different uh, the seating area will be work in a different temperature and the stage area will be at a different uh, temperature because people in the stage area will do will be doing different kind of activity so they require more quantity of air then also when it comes to air distribution in auditorium the challenge is the draft and uh, you the air has to ensure that it doesn't hit somebody's head directly so a lot of care has to be taken in terms of air distribution you should have perfect air distribution in a convention center otherwise you will feel very very comfortable inside very large halls uh, throw air from side walls you might have seen in lot of airports also there would be floor standing you ones with the jet diffusers which they have so they could be throwing from the side also so you can have both the options from the top and from the side also then selection of grill is very very important what type of air throw grill is what you are using it, it should reach the farthest region that is when it is more efficient so you need to have a proper selection for your grills and diffusers in what type you are going to use for air uh, we call that as air terminal devices so you need to have a good air terminal device for proper discharging of air then high air discharge velocity again results in lot of noise and you will also start feeling uncomfortable if the air is trying to hit your body directly so that is also needs to be avoided no air should come directly in contact to you because otherwise you will start feeling uncomfortable inside then location of equipment like chillers air handling units pumps and condensing units is very critical because the noise of these equipment should not be heard inside the auditorium you need to have good wall acoustics at the same time you need to have good acoustics for all these kind of equipment that you're going to use keep it in a distant area so that that noise is not heard otherwise you will not be comfortable inside the auditorium it is advisable always to have a separate ac plant room and air handling unit away from the auditorium so that the noise is not heard and whatever kind of system you use it is always advisable to acoustically insulate the walls of the ahu room also your ducts to be properly acoustically insulated and because the mics that are used on the stage ca carry even the most feeble noise is uh, captured so you should make sure that you are uh, you need to have a good acoustically insulated system sound alternators the more you use sound alternators the better the more efficient the auditoriums are going to be very very important especially where they take this kind of, where they record the dance programs etc and all should have very 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 silent atmosphere within the room the noise level plays a very very important role and you need to have sound alternators on the return air 
path as well as the supply air duct. Then, uh, stage condition, air conditioning has many challenges. Like I said, you have the lighting load inside. Different types of lights are used for different applications. Then, you need to have proper air distribution because artists are performing on the stage. You need to have a separate air distribution uh, norms for stage. Then, very high quality of indoor air to be maintained again. Otherwise, the, uh, the artists will start feeling very uncomfortable there. Then, you need to consider both specific heat and latent heat when you are talking about stage air conditioning because artists do sweat a lot which carry a lot of humidity and all that has to be removed and it needs to be taken care so you need to have remove both sensible heat as well as latent heat on the stage area then uh, equipment like speakers projectors exhaust fans have significant effect on the load we need to make sure that we capture these when we do the heat load design like for example if you have multiple projectors they would emit a lot of heat speakers also emit some amount of heat then you may be having exhaust fans to have proper ventilation then you need to make sure that the noise from the exhaust fan or the heat load from the motor of the exhaust fan also needs to be considered and the quantity of air that you need to take out has to be adequately compensated by bringing in more amount of fresh air then equipment load must be taken into consideration and last but not the least the architectural challenges this is one of the biggest and most important things in an auditorium it could be a dome like structure it could be a hexagonal structure it could be a polygon it could be anything it could be in any design any uh, type it could be transparent it could have glass on the top glass on the sides i mean there are various architectural designs which are coming up now more and more auditoriums have more and more uh, variety of designs and those challenges are quite huge for a hvac designer and but we, we need to be geared up for those challenges and we need to be prepared for those challenges. So with this, I think I will stop sharing my presentation. This is what I am going to talk about. Uh, so if we have any questions, we can please, uh, okay. if there are any questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Madhukar. That's a wonderful presentation. I think we have a few questions with us. Yeah. Now the first question is presented by Nagaraj. Hope, what is uh, one second. Hope my screen sharing is stopped. Energy symptoms experienced. Sir, to Prasad, sir, has my screen yeah. sharing stopped? Your screen sharing is stopped. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now the first question we have is energy symptoms experienced due to air conditioning. Allergy do symptoms. Energy? Do people get allergy by using air conditioners? Most important, the minute the indoor air quality is bad, you will start feeling sneezing. You will start sneezing. You will uh, your hands will start itching. Your uh, exposed body areas could start itching. You will start feeling uncomfortable. You will start sweating. And the first common thing what you come across is a lot of people do have our dust allergies. We will start sneezing inside. That's the most common thing. That is because of dust in the room. Pardon? Ah, it is because of the various con constraints which I told you, the carpets, the ah, allergens okay. and pollens, whatever I told you. Yeah. Okay. For that, the air change is very important, I think. No? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, now there is a, another question from Srikant CV. What is the ideal temperature for air conditioner? Means he is telling what is the ideal temperature inside the room. Okay, if I can know for what application, that would be of great help to me. Probably he is telling from the... Uh, home From comfort perspective, any whether it is auditorium, hotel, anything for comfort air conditioning, it is 25 plus or minus 1 degree. Okay. And uh, Madhukar, one more question here. If you have to get a temperature of 25 degree in the room, what is the thermostat setting you have to keep? See, generally, the uh, most of the air conditioning system work on the return air path, return air sensors. Or if we can ha ask, uh, if we can, uh, if uh, let us say if we are going talking about VRF systems, we uh, depend on the uh, refrigerant temperature. So then what happens is generally your thermostat setting, if you want a temperature of 25, ideally it should be at 26 or 27 because your return air temperature will be 2 degrees higher than the supply air temperature. So if you set it at 27, then your AC will cut off at 25. Okay. And if if you set it at 23, then your AC will cut off at 21. So if it is a room air conditioner? Ah, what generally 24, 25, 25 plus or minus 1. Okay. So your room temperature setting should also be at 25 or 26. 
Okay, that means the ideally 26. Yeah, what is the temperature difference between the thermostat setting and the HU temperature in the room? Two degrees. Two degrees is the difference. Okay. Yeah, two to three degrees. Again, depends on the delta T of the thermostat and the microprocessor programming what the uh, thermostat has been programmed for. Okay. That means uh, if we keep a thermostat temperature of 23, yeah. we will get it. Generally, it is two to three degrees. Okay. Okay. I think that will clear Mr. Srikant's question, I think. Okay. And uh, I have observed one problem whenever I go to the restaurants. Huh? Uh, generally, the hall, many in many of the restaurants have the smell of the food, especially that masala smell, or uh, and especially if I'm a vegetarian, sometimes the non veg smell uh, irritates me or make me feel uncomfortable. So how how should this care, this should be avoided? How the hotel air changes have better air changes. Okay, have, have better, better air changes. changes. Okay. So this is a, that means if the smell comes in the hotel, it is an indication that the air changes are in there the is condition. no proper air changes. Okay, fine. Yeah. Let's see, air changes nothing but you should remove the stale smell, you should bring in fresh air. Simple. Okay. Okay. And uh, one more thing what I observe in the restaurants is uh, they leave the air draft to come right into our face or our head. And they I think the hoteliers feel that they are doing something. Uh, good air conditioning. It is actually bad. It is bad. I think we yeah. feel uncomfortable when the draft comes directly on the head or Correct. face. Correct. Okay. No, this problem is more in uh, auditorial. I mean, typically, if you go, go through an airport where you have okay. these jet diffusers, floor standing jet diffusers, you walk okay. across the jet diffusers, it hit you so hard that you will actually literally waver because of the velocity of the air. So, okay. it's a common uh, problem. Or somebody, if you see on the first floor balcony, they would have these typical jet diffusers, which would be okay. throwing in one particular direction. So you go and stand in front of the jet diffuser, it will start hitting your head. Hitting your head. Okay. How do you avoid that? No, you can adjust those. It, those are known as eyeball jet diffusers. You can adjust the position of air throw so that it doesn't come down. It travels at a parallel uh, level to your uh, uh, this thing. Okay, just like how it is in the in the buses. Yes, exactly. If you see the bus, there are diffusers with a direction uh, change available there. Correct, correct. But, but most of the time they don't work. They hit you on the head itself. Okay. Okay. I think most of the questions are uh, through. We don't have any further quotation uh, questions now. Okay, there's one more question which has come. And this is from Daniel Vincent. What is the history standard of indoor air quality? Indoor different air quality. applications, different applications have different standards. That's why I said you need to refer uh Ishray guidebook for ventilation or Ishray guidebook of indoor air quality, which will give you specific uh air changes for specific application. It's different for different applications. Okay. I think Daniel Vincent, I think your doubt is cleared. You refer to the history handbook, which will give you the standards which are required. Okay, so that I think with that we come to the end of the questionnaire session. And uh, now let me let me thank the speaker. In fact, I was not aware that there are so many varieties of needs in air conditioning. I thought air conditioning means it is single air conditioning and the temperature is 25 degrees everywhere. But today I came to know that the air conditioning required in the lobby of the hotel is different from what is required in the uh, room of the hotel. The air conditioning, the type of air conditioning that is required in a disco hall is different from the one what is there in a common hall. As you told, I think in a disco hall because there is so much of sound. The air condition, the sound has to be removed from the disco hall, which again is connected well along with the air conditioner. So this has to be taken care of by the air conditioning designer itself, I think. So there are so many varieties actually, which has to be taken care. So many varieties, I think, as you told, in a, even in one uh, uh, convention center, what is the type of air conditioning required? And then you are telling about the importance of draft when the halls are very big. 
your draft has to be very big and when you make a long draft it may rise give rise to sound so both has to be balanced i think this is all the work of a design engineer and i think it's a very complex job it is not as simple as just getting 25 degrees probably i think we got a lot of information about the complexities in designing the air conditioning systems i think in each case whether it's a data center or a precision air conditioning shopping malls auditorium each of them require a different specific uh, type of design i feel that's what we have learned today and uh, it's really great and i think as we were going at we have one more question which has come from one of the reader one of the members mr subramaniam ns so what he is asking is people coming out of ac rooms have headaches what may be the reason people get headache when they come uh, out of ac rooms it is because of fatigue uh, you get headache because of fatigue and uh, the reason for that is again inadequate uh, uh, air good air quality uh, you need to have more of fresh air to keep you comfortable inside if you do not have proper fresh air say for example if you have sweat smell etc or if you have somebody is wearing a good somebody is wearing a lot of a perfume on them sitting next to you somewhere all these could all be the reasons for headache generally a good air movement good ventilation or air changes should take care of this the reason is only fatigue and because of this thing okay and uh, there's one more question from daniel vincent so he is asking do we need to have a separate air purifier in our bedrooms to breathe clean air i would rather put the question back to mr daniel what kind of air quality do you have in your house because it depends on what kind of air quality you have in your house because generally for domestic reasons we do not recommend any air purifier it is just a myth that uh, it's more of a psychological effect than really having an air purifier and i don't think in residences you need a purifier okay i think mr madhukar the reason could be that people have a feeling that in room air conditioners that is in strict air conditioning the same air gets recycled again and again and over a period of 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours the air quality may deteriorate no and generally uh, it doesn't happen because uh, a, every wall has got every wall is porous whatever kind of wall you build is porous then there's this call it as something lot, lot of your windows and doors have lot of gaps we call that as infiltration so there's lot of fresh air which comes in through that or lot of air from your room is thrown out because of that so you will have some amount of fresh air i would rather say if it is so important then you can probably keep your windows little bit open very little open so that you get adequate fresh air and you get good quality of air then again i think uh, is it recommended to use hipa filter for air purifier number one i do not recommend an air purifier if you are buying an air purifier better buy with hipa filter because that is the best if you buy you, you want to spend you want to spend from the best that is what i would prefer okay and uh, one more uh, question mr madhukar yeah some people complain that they get uh, allergic cold or sinus problem after coming out from the air conditioning overnight they put the air conditioner morning when they get up they come out with headaches and uh, cold or sinus again is the all, same all, all, all the volatile pollutants indoor pollutants which i mentioned could yeah. be one of the could be the main reason the main reason is that your indoor air pollutants okay okay so maybe as you told keeping slightly door open make no, it even open. the window even no, the window ah yeah. uh, keep the window slightly open that will give the solution for this okay because now it is what is happening no people are having air tight uh, windows So, sir, you cannot make any window airtight, sir. So, with this UPVC windows, any any window, it's just okay. airtight for six months. After that, six there months. is no airtight. Okay. Nothing called airtight. Okay. Even your own car, you can make out the difference in your own car. When it is new, you will not hear any sound. As the time moves on, you will start hearing a lot of noise from outside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madhukar. We're well, going ahead. i think we got a very we got a lot of valuable inputs about air conditioners air conditioner is not simple as simple as you think if you follow the uh, if you follow the guidelines given by the speaker today probably you can overcome all those problems what we are facing 
like headaches, getting cold, or getting fatigue. All these things I think we can solve actually. And he has given lot. And we being in the line of air conditioners, we all need to know how a convention center is designed. We should know some fa facts. How a precision air, how a precision air conditioner works. Because people keep asking us, because we are all in the line of air conditioners. People think that we know everything about air conditioner. So we need to know some basic aspects of air conditioning. I think we have we have all become learned today. We have learned a lot of things about the various types of air conditioning. Maybe some about some uh, some types of air conditioning. And uh, I think in the later sessions, in the later webinars, we will have some more input on the other varieties of air conditioners. So I thank the speaker, Mr. Madhukar, having given us wonderful, valuable insight into the air conditioning systems. Thank you, Mr. Madhukar. Thank you very thank you, much. Sir. Welcome. Welcome anytime. Welcome anytime. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I also thank the members. In spite of their busy schedules, they have taken the time out and they have attended the session. This only shows how interested these members are to know the uh, to know about the science of air conditioning. I thank all the members who have attended today. And now for the benefit of the members who are still not the members of RATA, RATA, I would suggest you to become the members of RATA. RATA conducts regular classes, regular webinars, which are learning sessions. And by being the members of RATA, you can attend to these kind of sessions and upgrade your knowledge. And we also conduct various other webinars on sales tax, on uh, weight and measures, on ESI, PF, partnerships, private limiteds. Likewise, many things which are of concern to all professionals in the or entrepreneurs who are in this line or the people who are working in this line. I would suggest you all to uh, become member of RATA. Friends, we are going to have one more webinar that is going to be on the 28th of this month, which is going to be conducted by Mr. Subramaniam. He is going to give a conclusive, conclusive talk on winning in selling. He has been conducting a series of webinars, winning in selling. So the, on the 28th, we'll be having a conclusive webinar on winning in selling. So happy, happy viewing and thanking each one of you. I conclude this session of webinar of Rata Bangalore. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.